Hello, and welcome to Cyprosoft's webinar on securing your investment in Oracle Forms. Uh, this is your host and presenter today, Matt Brunquell. And what we'll do is we'll start with reviewing the agenda and a few housekeeping items. One second here. There we go. So we have a mix of managers and Oracle Forms developers on the webinar today. However, having spoken with several of you, um, a common theme or interest uh, really came out of uh, attending or registering for this webinar, which is learning more about your options for Oracle Forms applications moving forward. And some of you in particular are trying to put together a business case to present uh, to management on migrating to Java. So with this in mind, what we'll do is we'll start with providing background data on why you should secure your Oracle Forms investment. Then next, we'll look at the different options. In this section, we'll uh, provide a list of key questions customers should be asking and answering to help determine what is the best option for you. Uh, that should be some real value for those of you looking to uh, put together a case to present to management. And then many of you are interested in particular uh, in migration uh, specifically to Java, uh, considering Oracle's strategic direction with Java. So we'll drill down a little more into the challenges and benefits of that migration option in particular. And then this will be followed by a demonstration of an autom automated migration using our Exodus solution. So feel free to post questions during the entire session, and we'll go through these during the Q&A at the end. And the way you post a question is uh, use the Q&A button on your WebEx toolbar. This is the one with the um, uh, question mark button. And uh, there's also a chat one, but it just makes it easier for me to go to one panel to make sure I cover all of your questions. So before we get into the agenda, just a background on Cypersoft, for those of you not familiar with the company hosting today's webinar. We're a wholly owned subsidiary of Unify Corporation who has over 25 years of experience in database development tools and migration. And Cypersoft has an established and very successful practice for upgrading Oracle Forms applications and across all the different options that you're going to see presented today. And we're also the only company to offer Oracle Forms migration, including the business logic, as either a licensed tool or a service or some combination of both, depending on the customer's needs. And we have industry endorsement from Oracle as a certified member of their technology network, their partner network, as well as the Oracle Modernization Alliance. And some of their global partners like HP and Sun, although Sun's now a part of Oracle, have also uh, trained and are licensed to sell our migration and upgrade solutions as part of their Oracle practices. So moving on to uh, the agenda, what we're covering, the next few slides really provide some data points if you're building a business case as to why to secure your Oracle Forms investment. And there are many reasons to consider, and we start to list some of them here, but you know whether they're short-term objectives or long-term objectives, they really center around, mostly, how do you maximize the investment you've already made in your Oracle Forms application for the future direction of your company. It's important to note that, as part of this, um, Oracle Forms is very, pro is very prominent still throughout many organizations. And it's not dead, and you're not alone in having some level of investment in Oracle Forms that needs to be addressed. And this is really one of the, the common upfront questions that we get from a lot of customers. Is Oracle Forms dead? Um, many organizations are looking at, at the applications they maintain and extend in Oracle Forms and are really assessing, you know, how do they correlate this with the directions for the new plat technology platforms and standardizing development environments that they're moving to. And they're really trying to figure out how do we how do we take what we have in Oracle Forms and fit it into that strategy. The other thing you got to look at um, when you're you're considering the why whoops, went ahead of slide there, is um, is not just why but when as well. 
And this chart helps with that. This, this chart shows the published support and obsolescence timelines for various Oracle releases. And these timelines can help you determine when you need to be looking at options based on the release of your Oracle Forms applications and how critical they are to the organization. So, you, you know, a lot of the customers we work with, they're on one of these releases that um, is either an extended support or gone off extended support and they need to determine what they're going to do moving forward and that's driving um, part of their timeline for which option they're going to. So with all of that in mind, let's move on to what are the options for your Oracle Forms applications moving forward. And we list the four primary ones here. You know, there's a fifth one uh, that we don't mention out there, which is do nothing. But if you're really looking to secure your Oracle Forms investment moving forward, that's not really uh, an option for you if you're trying to secure that investment. So the first one, web enabling forms, what does that mean? Really, uh, that option is about upgrading to either Forms 10G or 11G. Uh, it really allows the application to utilize some Java capabilities, but it does have some limitations for clients who um, are really moving towards Java or have Java skill sets, you know, and really want to have full-fledged Java applications. The second one, the rewrite application, um, is, a, is an obvious option, if you will, but it's also the most costly. Uh, and typically when this is chosen is when the application no longer provides appropriate information to the organization. So they're basically looking to retool the application with a lot of new requirements um, or re-architect it for various reasons. And so that's where a rewrite is uh, considered. However, it's a very costly and timely undertaking uh, for that option. Now for organizations that have chosen to standardize on Java as their development environment, um, or uh, um, consolidate their sk developer skill sets into Java, the automated conversion or migration is an option. And we're going to explore this one in more detail uh, just a few slides uh, down the road here. And then the last one is one that's um, become much more uh, prevalent recently, and that's for organization, which is automatic conversion to Apex. For organizations looking to remain on the Oracle stack, but they're not consolidating their development skill sets in Java, um, there's Apex. But since it's so new, organizations, what we're seeing so far is they're doing small development projects here or new development projects. However, um, for it, it's been a consideration for migration for less mission-critical apps in the short term uh, simply because there is some capability to do some migration there um, over from Oracle Forms to Apex, and Cypressoft's working with both Oracle and customers uh, to help in those cases. So which option is the best one for you? The next few slides kind of provide questions customers consider to help determine which, which is the best option for their Forms uh, applications. So for example, when we look at this slide, um, you know, what are the business issues for the application for the future, the next one, three, or five years? Really kind of reviewing uh, what's the application's future um, gives you the ability, kind of thinking through that, to plan properly around the issues around the application and are there going to be a lot of changes to it in the next couple of years or is it going to really be remaining primarily the same? In other words, that investment, all that IP you have in it, is, is that going to be staying in place? Um, that next bullet, is the application providing real value to the organization? I think really what that means is, you know, are there, um, if it's not, not quite fitting the needs anymore from when it was first introduced into the organization, you know, are there enhancements or things that you need to do as you bring it over into um, the, the fu you know, the future direction of the company? And, you know, as you start thinking through that, that starts crystallizing for you which options really are, are going to um, be the best approach for you. Now, we won't go through each of these bullets in detail, but having these slides, I think, and these questions for you will help you as you uh, start thinking more about the different options and which one's the best one for you. 
uh, here again some more of those questions and here just some thoughts on, on some of these, some of these bullets. You know, if the company's planning to merge with other organizations or uh, perhaps your, your company's going through, if they're very well positioned right now in this economy, they're doing the acquisitions. Um, this can affect, you know, what you need to do with the application in terms of integrating in with these other environments. Also, uh, looking at um, the hardware bullet you see there, you know, is there platform refreshes that need to be considered because the software's not up to date, whether it's, you know, going back to that Oracle uh, Forms um, life cycle chart that we had, or maybe it's because of the database underneath. You know, we, you know, you might be on a very old release of Oracle database. We see a lot of that. So there's things like that that you need to, to start kind of shoring up and assessing what you have in your environment uh, to help you determine um, what it is. And then this, this next bullet, we talk a lot about this, especially when we get into the benefits of the migration option, but it's something that you really need to be thinking about up front uh, before you pick your specific option. And that is, are, are the users able to be retrained um, or how many users do you have in the application now? And by doing, choosing whichever option you're going to do, is there going to be a lot of retraining involved on those uh, business users? Um, because that can become quite a costly uh, um, undertaking. So again, another slide with some more of these um, questions. I think it's important to remember that on all of these, though, there is no wrong answer. It's really all about taking these questions and starting to write down and think about what is going on in your organization? What are the objectives? And, um, and, and start thinking about, you know, what are the most important things to you in terms of what you're, what you're trying to accomplish with these applications moving forward? And from that, you can start to put together a better picture of what's going to be, uh, the best approach for you in terms of, um, the resources, the cost, and the time, uh, in order to move things forward. Now, keeping all of that in mind, I think it's um, important to look at what's Oracle's direction in all of this as well And uh, when it comes to Oracle Forms. And given uh, one of the ways to look at that is look at Oracle's direction with their Oracle Forms applications, which is the eBusiness Suite. And when you look at that, Oracle's taking the eBusiness Suite to Java. So um, it's, I think that warrants spending some time on the migration option to Java as well, besides some of your personal requests to drill down in that option itself anyway. Uh, many Oracle shops are standardizing on Java for new development, and, you know, those with the eBusiness suite are moving that way by default as they move up to the later versions of eBusiness suite, and they've built a lot of custom forms around these packaged applications that they want to migrate over to Java as well as they upgrade the eBusiness suite. So with that, we'll go ahead and start drilling down specifically into the migration option to Java. Now these are just some of the very common questions that we hear from folks that once they kind of get there to that option, what are some of the questions they have about migrating forms to Java or J2EE? You know, we get the, I've heard forms is going away. Is that true? Well, um, you know, we talked a little bit about that earlier. Uh, there's a lot of companies out there with forms that are maintaining and extending their apps there. But when you look at where Oracle's taking their Oracle forms applications, you look at the time, the, the life cycle obsolescence chart, you can see, you know, there is the option to stay on forms, um, if you will, but is that really the direction things are moving forward for new development? Probably not. I'm using Forms Client Server today. What is my path forward? Well, there are different uh, options you can take. Uh, usually that question is centered around what does the front-end GUI look like? And there, there, there's different options when you go to Java. You know, the obvious one that people always default to when they think of Java is the web. But there are also client server deployment options in Java as well. And something to be considered depending on uh, the type of app that you've uh, built in Oracle Forms. And is Oracle providing a path to J2EE for Forms developers? 
Um, and then those that, again, some of you, your organizations are already going down the, the J2E path or Java, what should you do with your forms developers and your forms? So what are the challenges in this Java migration option? When you look at the challenges here, um, the, I think the number one challenge and number one concern that comes up from customers and uh, it, when they're looking to migrate the forms apps, even if it's not Java, is how do I retain the business logic from the original forms application? That's what we hear time and time again. That's where, you know, a lot of the time and uh, um, energy and effort have been spent in terms of the IP in these applications. So that's typically the number one challenge. What do you, how do we get the business logic over in a timely way and a way that um, is going to allow us to capture that as much as possible without having to rewrite it or worry about did we capture all of it in over in the new option? The other um, big challenge we hear about for the very large Oracle Forms applications is, hey, this is used by a lot of, u uh, uh, by a lot of end users. We want to get this over into the new platform, but um, we want to minimize the disruption to the end users because it is an important application. That's why they want to move it in the first place, and they're trying to figure out how do we minimize the disruption to the end users. So the benefits of an automated migration in this approach, considering those challenges that we just discussed, is um, an automated migration, if it covers the business logic, provides a very audit, automated way to make sure you're capturing all the business logic in the move over. Um, also, uh, giving you the ability to do a like for like type of migration. If the application is fitting the majority of the requirements today and it's critical, you want to have that same functionality over in the new environment. And then you want to um, also, what that does is allows you to minimize that disruption to the end users as well if you're doing that kind of like-for-like -like, uh, move over. And then once you have it over in the new platform, you have the ability to then extend it and maintain it in that new environment. And what that automated approach does in, in capturing all of that is it really allows you to retain that investment you already have in that application and do it in a way that minimizes the risk, the, the types of risks that would be involved if you were doing a rewrite of that application. So kind of honing in on that whole uh, business logic piece, the importance of when you bring that business logic over, um, what's key to addressing that challenge, uh, whether you do it as a rewrite or in this automated migration approach, is the code and the business logic that's brought over needs to be clean. Um, it needs to be maintainable by the staff once it's migrated over. And where possible, you want to have, as, as much as possible, a one-to-one -one correlation. So it's very easy to maintain it and extend it as you were doing over in the Oracle Forms um, environment. So you want to have in that automated migration a one-to-one -one conversion as much as this is possible um, where you can. So we're going to um, show you an example of how this can be done, an automated migration, uh, of the automated migration option, in this case to Java. And this, just to give you a little bit of background to prepare you going to the, the demonstration, um, this is a solution we're going to be showing for it. Um, it's called Exodus. It's from Cyphersoft. And uh, actually, um, the way we're going to use it today is for automated migration over to Java, but we also use it in our services that we provide for upgrading clients to 10G and 11G forms as well. Um, I, I won't go into the details of how we use it in that case, but uh, because of what Exodus does, it's, it's very useful and flexible in um, these different options it can help in one way or another, whichever of these options you're choosing, um, uh, to help kind of reduce the costs of that. What we have found with our customers, and we've done hundreds of these conversions, is that compared to a rewrite, 
So this is based on the customers putting together their their business case on here's what it would take us in terms of time and cost for a rewrite versus what they end up doing with the Exodus solution. Um, it's a it's a reduction versus a rewrite in up to 90% in many cases. The other nice thing that it does is it allows the use of Oracle Fusion Middleware 11. That's very important for those of you that are moving up in the e-business suite to the later versions and going to that Oracle stack for Java. Um, the other key thing that I think it's important to note is the real distinction of the Exodus solution is that it migrates over all of the business logic. Um, or I shouldn't say that. There's some business logic that doesn't get migrated, but it, it flags that for you um, so that you know what doesn't migrate and can determine what's the best approach to replace that over in the Java environment. A very good example of that is uh, go-to statements. There's no such equivalent in Java. So um, something, a decision has to be made in terms of, okay, how is that go-to being used in, in forms? In the case of, for example, of um, error handling, you know, the decision would be made, oh, okay, we need to do try catches in Java. But that just gives you an idea of um, the distinction is that it is handling all of that business logic in the migration in a very automated form. And you'll see that in the demo. There's actually a button um, in the conversion process that, uh, you know, that you have to click to, to convert all of the business logic. You won't see any other solution out there with that choice. Anything out there else that you look at is going to make you rewrite that business logic. So about the demonstration itself, what we're going to show you here in a second, and um, I'm going to use uh, Lorraine Ruddy. She is our director of... Uh, customer uh, implementations uh, for Cypressoft practice, um, and I'm going to introduce her in just a second, but what she's going to do is show you the Oracle Summon application. It's an Oracle Forms application that they use for demo purposes, and then we'll show you what it looks like converted um, on the Java side, and we actually have um, two GUI interface options uh, as part of the conversion, a Java plugin as well as an Oracle ADF option. And so we'll show you what it looks like over in the converted thing. And then we'll go ahead and just show you the wizard process uh, for converting it, and just so you can see uh, what it looks like. And then we'll open up some of the code so you can actually see what that business logic uh, from Oracle Forms looks like over in the Java uh, environment. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Lorraine and turn it over to her for the demo. So as I mentioned, Lorraine is our uh, Director of Customer Implementations, and uh, Lorraine has been with Cypressoft now for, my goodness, Lorraine, how long have you been with us? <laughs> a long time, Matt, a long, a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so Lorraine has been with us a long time, but has played a lot of different roles in working with the customers um, uh, from a project management to really a first level of technical support in some cases. So she provides a really good um, background of what are, you know, what are the customer requirements and experiences and questions that we see out there that they are uh, working with um, to address their Oracle Forms um, uh, initiatives moving forward. And with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Lorraine for the, for the demonstration. Okay, thank you, Matt. Okay, so um, as Matt said, um, we use the Summit application here for our demonstration purposes. And so what you should see now is the Summit application um, running under Oracle Forms um, 6i. This is a, a relatively uh, small application. It has about, it has three forms in it. There's a couple of the PL SQL libraries, um, which contain a lot of the logic. Um, and it has a menu in it. So those are the three pieces that we convert in an Oracle Forms application with the Exodus tool. So this is what it looks like running in Oracle Forms 6i. And then I've gone ahead, as Matt said, and I've, um, I have here now, this is the converted application. This is running as a Java plugin. So you can see this here, uh, 
Uh, on the left side is the Oracle Form 6i. This window here in the front now, on the right-hand side, this is the Java plugin. So it's very similar. Um, the plugin version uh, from the Exodus converter, um, this is pretty much right out of the, uh, the code that's, that's generated straight from Exodus. You know, we go ahead, we deploy it, we compile it and run it. This is pretty much what we get. So uh, this tree structure looks a little bit different. The icons are a little bit different. The fonts are a little bit different. The colors are a little bit different. But the um, basic functionality is um, is almost identical. As, as Matt said, there's a real um, common um, look and feel to it from the original application, um, which means that there's very little uh, training time required for your users. You could do this type of conversion from an Oracle Forms application to the Java code and, you know, implement it in your user base and really have very little um, retraining of the users. It's, it, it just runs um, almost identical to what they had in their Oracle Forms application. You'll see um, in this particular Summit application, um, like I said, it's not a huge application, but it does have several things that are representative of Oracle Forms applications. It has these tabbed canvases, which all convert automatically as part of the Exodus tool. It has a um, list of values, which are used typically um, extensively in Oracle applications. Um, this tree structure, um, things like um, um, one-to-many um, kind of master detail relationships, that type of thing. And then if I bring up our uh, second um, out, um, uh, presentation type, which is the Oracle Face, ADF Faces version, uh, this, this, this is pure HTML code now that comes up. And you'll see, again, it looks, comes up um, in a browser, and it looks very similar to what we saw with the original um, application um, because it is, um, oh, and then I, I had it ready to go. Sorry about that. Bring it back up. But because it is an HTML page, there are um, some things that um, work a little bit differently than in an actual Oracle uh, Forms application. And um, so it typically requires a little more, what's going on here? Requires a little more um, uh, work after the, um, I'm just going to go ahead, I'm sorry about that, I'm just going to go ahead and start that again. Requires a little more work after the, um, after the actual uh, code is generated. I'm going to go ahead and start it. That will take just a minute to um, start back up on my machine. So while that's coming back up, here it is. There we go. Okay, so again, though, all of the things that were supported in the original application, this tree structure, um, the master detail relationships tab, all of those things are also converted as part of the ADF basis uh, version. So that's a matter of deciding what works best within your own organization. Um, do you want to go to the ADF basis? Do you want to be using pure HTML pages? Um, so that your choices, uh, both are available. Your choices are based usually on the various business drivers within your organization as to which way you want to go on that. So let me go ahead and just bring up, this is what the Exodus tool looks like. Um, I'm just running this in a standalone mode from a batch file. Um, it can also be run from um, JDeveloper, one of the IDEs, as a plug-in. <clears throat> um, so the, the basic concept of this um, product. It's a, it's a fairly straightforward conversion process. Um, we set a few things like do we want to convert um, packages that are in the database, which is uh, sometimes necessary um, if transferring databases. Um, otherwise, we tend to leave them in the database um, 
if we, we call from the, if you generate uh, or convert your application, you are able to call those stored procedures in your database from the, from the Java code just with um, standard JDBC drivers. So it's not a requirement. So you, you simply use these options to set a few things prior to the conversion. Um, <clears throat> and then there are a couple of choices here. Um, convert to PLSQL. This is one of the things that Matt mentioned during his presentation. Um, do you want to actually convert the PLSQL code? It's the, the business logic within the form. Um, we default this to true because normally that's what we want to do. We want everything converted. And um, we can set the presentation layer. <clears throat> do we want the applet version, which is the plugin version, or do we want that ADF faces version? The conversion process itself is identical regardless of which presentation layer we choose. Um, again, the only thing that's different is whether you get HTML pages generated or XML pages generated. And then we set some things like where are our input files, what is it that we're trying to convert. Um, those, those items are um, defined within a configuration file. <clears throat> and then I can go ahead with the conversion. So the first thing we normally convert are the um, PLSQL libraries. Uh, we typically do that because they're the common, uh, the common pieces to the, to the application. So the Summit application happens to have a couple of libraries out there. So I'm just going to go ahead and select them and convert them. This process of the conversion, again, because these aren't huge files, this parsing and this kind of one-to-one -one, um, generation of the code happens uh, fairly quickly for this particular application. Again, it's based on um, the size of some of these files. So we're able to go through this in, um, within the time we kind of have allocated for our, um, for our demonstration. But you can see it's a, it's a very straightforward process. You simply choose the files that you want to convert. <clears throat> At the end of each of the conversion steps, we get a report on our progress. Was it successful? Um, if there were any kinds of errors during the conversion, we'd get some kind of indicator to say, um, this is where the problem was encountered, and then we could go back and take a look to see what was causing the problems. As Matt said, there are, there are, although we support an awful lot of functions within the Oracle Forms applications, there are still a few functions out there that we run into that we are not able to convert, and so um, sometimes we generate empty Java classes, uh, but we, you know, raise some kind of a flag to indicate that it's an issue and needs to be resolved manually. So basically what I've, what I've done here as I've been talking is I've gone through the conversion process three different times for the three different file types that, that the Exodus product supports, and that's the form modules, the menu modules, and the libraries, the PLSQL libraries. And those are typically what makes up an Oracle Forms application. So Exodus is able to convert all of those pieces for you so that you can get the clean application with all of the same look and feel and functionality as the original application. So, and the very last step that we would go through um, as part of the generation uh, or the conversion is uh, just this generation step, which really takes, just takes all of the um, generated source code that we've just created and it bundles it up with all of the um, kind of the runtime classes that we've, we've built that emulate the Oracle Forms runtime, and it builds a WAR file, a web archive file. And then that WAR file is what you take and you deploy um, on your application server. Um, whether it, and, and we support um, any type of application server that um, supports Java. So Oracle application server, Tomcat, whatever it happens to be, um, you simply take that WAR file, create a new project, deploy it, compile it, and run it. So that's, that's the conversion process. Um, this is what the Exodus tool looks like. It's a fairly uh, straightforward type of tool to use. There aren't a lot of choices in it. Um, the last thing that I just wanted to show you quickly is some of the actual generated uh, Java classes that are created from that process. And I have, uh, this is JDeveloper, and I've just pulled up 
Um, I have both the ADF version in here and the uh, plug-in version. And you'll notice that they both have um, the same subfolders within. Um, the application sources, um, in both the ADF and the Swing version, this particular folder will be identical. Again, this contains all of the business logic, and so this piece does not vary. This is, this is the same regardless, but I'm just going to go down and drill down a little bit here so you can see the, the structure of the um, generated code. You'll see that it's split into, um, the, again, the libraries, the menus, and then where it says Summit, that's the actual forms application name. So this is where the forms are. Just taking a minute here to drill down. And now it seems to be, okay, there we go. So if I go down into, so what we see are, are the three forms, customers, orders, and pick. Within each of the forms, we see the blocks. And in each of these blocks, we see the items. That's a very similar structure as to what you see in the um, Oracle Forms Builder from the Oracle Forms side. Again, we're trying to make it um, as familiar and as, uh, say, readable as it was on the Oracle Forms side. In a lot of cases, you have Oracle Forms developers that are moving uh, to the Java world with this application as it's migrated, and they're, they're perhaps learning Java as well. So we're trying to make it, there's a, there's a balance there between um, making it uh, familiar and readable for these, these people coming from the Oracle Forms side, and on the other hand, for, for, for companies that have Java resources that need to go in and be able to pick up the maintenance and the enhancement of these applications going forward, they need to be able to go in and be able to read uh, that Java code and, and, uh, and maintain it. So this brought up a sample of the code here on the right. Um, this is standard format that you see. It sets the form properties, uh, the alerts, and then we get into some triggers and some things like that. One other thing to note here that I just want to point out is that um, all of the nomenclature from the Oracle Forms application is carried over into the um, generated Java classes. Again, um, one of the things that people always ask us about uh, when, it, when you're using an automatic, an automatic converter tool, uh, people are concerned about, um, again, the readability, the maintainability of, of this code that's generated. And so, um, I, you know, one of the things that we do to try to make it easier is, is we maintain all of that nomenclature, whether it's the item names, your stored database procedure names, your trigger names, all of those names are maintained. Um, we do strip out the hyphens to make them fit into the Java environment, but um, when you're looking at this code, um, you'll recognize the names from the Oracle Forms application side. And we also carry over all of the, um, the comments that are in the original Oracle Forms application. Again, if, if they're used as some form of documentation for why code was changed or um, added or inserted, um, that type of information is important in the, um, it's still relevant in the, in the generated application because it is um, such a one-to-one -one type conversion. So this is the generated code. Okay, so um, Matt, that's that's kind of um, those are the, the the pieces that I wanted to, to show just quickly to kind of give everyone a sense of what what the Exodus tool does. Um, I'm great. going to turn it back over to you. Okay. All right. Well, thanks so much, Lorraine. That was great. So what we're going to do now is open up for uh, a Q&A session. And again, the way you're going to uh, post your questions is use that question mark button on your WebEx toolbar, and uh, we'll uh, go through those and uh, start answering the questions. We'll go silent here for just about a minute uh, to give you guys a chance to post the questions uh, as well as us to start reading through the ones that have already been posted. And then we'll come back on in just a minute and start going through those. Thanks.
All right, we're going to go ahead and get started uh, with your questions. So uh, the first question is, uh, how do I get a copy of the presentation? I like the slides with all the, the questions on it. So the way you can do that is there's, there's two ways. One is we're going to post a recording of this webinar on the Cypersoft website. So, um, and that should be done by uh, early next week. And so you can just go to the website and get that recording and, and get it that way. Um, the other way is contact your Cypersoft representative and they can get you an actual copy of the, the PowerPoint um, if you need it. All right, next question. Uh, what is the process for, if we want to do an ex, use your Exodus migration services, what's the process to go through for that? Um, that basically what we do is, uh, when we work with a customer on that, is um, we have an analyzer tool uh, that's part of the Exodus tool, if you will, and we run the forms applications that are uh, under consideration for migration through that, and then we come back with a fixed price estimate of the time and effort to migrate that solution. And that includes, you know, here's what wouldn't be migrated and would require some some work around that. So it gives you a very good idea of uh, what the effort's going to be, and we provide a fixed price estimate. We also, you know, sell the tool um, as a tool. We'll license the tool to you if you want as well, so you can do it yourself. All right, next question. Uh, what if I don't like the look and feel of the Oracle Forms application over on the Java side? What if I want to modernize it? Uh, that can be done, actually, um, with this tool. There are ways. Uh, we've worked with customers where they've, you know, one of the key things is they wanted the like-for-like like in the business logic, but they did want to do some modernization, if you will, or webifying of the front end. Um, in fact, it was one of the reasons they wanted to move off of forms. They were trying to get away from the forms looking feel. And uh, that can be done. There's um, a process that we do where uh, working with you to define a more modernized template, if you will, templates, and then um, we use the tool, you know, to, to migrate over and into those templates. Uh, but certainly, you know, there's some, some what's the word, cleanup or polishing to be done of the look and feel after the raw migration, um, so that can be done anyway. Next question. Hold on one sec, there's some new ones coming in here as well that I need to uh, make sure I keep track of. Uh, the next question is, can I just convert the PL SQL? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, we've actually had folks where they just were looking to get their PL SQL converted to Java, and that can be done. Um, with Exodus. All right, let me scroll down. I just need to scroll down the window here to uh, see. Okay, next question. What are the application server requirements to run the generated uh, application? Could I run it on Tomcat? Uh, the answer is yes. This is um, similar to actually another question I had a little bit farther down, so I'm just going to answer them together here. And that is um, you... This is a pure Java application that you get. I mean, you get all of the source code to it. And it is truly, uh, the converted application is truly Java, which means you can run it in any Java stack um, for the, uh, it doesn't have to be the Oracle uh, Java stack, if you will. It can be other app servers. Um, you could run this with other databases. Obviously, if you have Oracle-specific calls in there, you know, like stored procedures and triggers or maybe some modifications depending on the database you're going to. But in terms of the Java code itself, it'll run in any Java stack. Um, you, you will be uh, independent, if you will. And then, uh, Lorraine, you know, feel free to chime in if you have any other thoughts on that in terms of um, uh, requirements on the JDK or anything like that. Yeah, the only the only thing that I would add there, Matt, um, it, yeah, JDK, we're certified on uh, 1.5 at this point. Um, all, we have some clients already running on 1.6, so we don't really have any uh, reported problems there. But 1.5 is where we're certified at this point. Okay, great. Next question. Any plans for Java SE or Java FX? So I'm not familiar with Java FX. 
I, I'm thinking when you refer to SE, you're referring to the standard edition of Java as opposed to J2EE. And um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer no, Lorraine. I don't know if you have anything to add to this. Certainly, um, if you have specific needs there, we're more than happy to understand what you're trying to do there with it and see whether or not that's something we can do. But uh, this is definitely uh, for the J2EE environment just because um, we've done some very, very complex, uh, you can imagine with Oracle Forms, there are some very complex applications out there. And so um, J2EE has been the, the, the target in order to address the full spectrum of Oracle Forms apps that might need to be migrated. Yeah, and, and, and again, Matt, I, I, uh, everything that you said I would agree with. I, I am not uh, familiar with Java app FX either, so um, if, if you want to provide a little more detail on, on, on that question or behind that question or what your environment is and what you're trying to confirm, um, I'd be happy to, to, to try and answer that for you. Great. Next question, is Apex a target yet? Uh, certainly um, it is. Uh, although for us, uh, what we're what we're doing is um, uh, we're doing it as a service right now. Uh, we do because Exodus does um, uh, business logic so well. It is uh, it it's actually very very helpful in doing Apex migrations right now. Because for those of you that have worked with Apex, there is some some uh, uh, utilities included with it for migrating the, the visual components of an Oracle Forms app, but it doesn't handle the, um, the business logic. And in fact, uh, we're working with Oracle there, particularly in that area. So we don't have it uh, as automated a tool yet as we do for Exodus for Java, but we're getting there. But in the meantime, because of that expertise and the way we can use the tool internally, we can do Apex migrations to Apex for you uh, if that's something you really want to do right now. The thing that we're seeing, though, is that what a lot of customers are coming back to us and saying is, hey, we're, you know, Apex is new. We're kind of testing it out on small development projects, pilot projects. They're not really, um, unless you're, the Oracle Forms project you have in mind is a very small application, not mission critical. They're a little wary of, um, uh, just moving that over to Apex at this point because, you know, Apex is still baking, if you will. Next question. But if you want to find out more about that, by the way, uh, we have a recorded webinar on that, and we actually have another one coming up in December on uh, migration to Apex. Next question. If you make a minor change to one form in JDeveloper, do you have to generate a war for the entire app and deploy the entire app? Lorraine, I'm going to ask for your help on that. Okay. All right. I'll take that. Um, it, it depends. Um, you, you can run the application either through JAR files or run them with class files. If you're just changing, if you're using the class files, if you change the class file, then you don't have to um, generate a war for the entire application and redeploy it. If you're using the JAR files, you will have to. So there's probably a cycle there. If you're just testing, um, you're probably using the class files, verifying that things work. Then once you're ready to deploy the entire application, then you would generate the, the new war file. Great. Oh, by the way, we have a follow, uh, just follow-up, Lorraine, for you. Um, on the Java FX, just a note from that questioner, Java FX runs on JVM, see JavaFX.com. Yeah, so. I, I see that, and, and we're going to take that away and uh, see what we can find out about that. I, I don't know the answer to that, but I'd certainly be happy to follow up on that. Okay, great. Okay, and then just a, a comment. I'm not sure what – I don't know if this was on your last um, – uh, answer on the uh, on the full you know whether you have to fully deploy each time. Uh, just an FYI, Ant automates builds. Um, right. Yep. Yeah. That, that's right. what we use. Yeah. And that's okay. So that's what we use as well. All right. That's all the questions that we have right now. Um, so uh, 
we're going to start wrapping up, but if you, if you have another question, um, please uh, go ahead and uh, post it as we wrap it up, and uh, we'll, we'll have a little bit of time to, um, to address it still. So what we want to do is uh, thank you for attending. And just before I, I go into some of these uh, upcoming events, just to kind of summarize for you what we did here today is um, we went through um, – Hold on one second. I'm getting a message that I'm not sharing the uh, the slide. So uh, let me figure that out while I summarize for you. I, I was worried about you seeing the, the event slide, but um, apparently that's not even an issue yet. So hold on one second, and uh, we'll, I'll, I'll get us back there. But while I do that, I'm going to go ahead and summarize for us. You know, what you saw today in terms of securing your Oracle investment moving forward is that there are some different uh, – options out there for you. Um, here, hold on. There we go. I'm trying to multitask here and, and make sure we bring up the, uh, the slides for you. But you saw there's some different options for you moving forward uh, to, sec to secure it. And one thing I want you to keep in mind, you know, we drilled down on the, the Java migration option because of Oracle's strategic direction with their forms applications and because that's what many of you were interested in when I spoke to you beforehand. But those, those are all viable options depending on your needs. Go through those questions that we provided for you. We hope you found them of value. Um, but uh, I hope that you do get out of it, though, that that automated conversion can be a very cost-effective option. Um, and in the case of Exodus, uh, you know, it can be a 90% uh, reduction in cost and time versus a rewrite. And a lot of that has to do with the business logic, the automated conversion of the business logic. That's key to that, and that's really key to the Exodus product. Now, that being said, I need to bring up the slide now, so let me try and do that. I think I'm just about there for you. Hey, I did it. All right. So, with that, we're going to wrap it up want to thank you for attending. Again, you'll find this uh, uh, recording on the Cypersoft uh, webpage early next week. We have the website up there, cypersoftinc.com. Uh, you can also find some information on Cypersoft on our uh, parent company's website, uh, Unified Corporation, and that website is unify.com. Now, we're trying to do these webinars on a monthly basis. So as I mentioned uh, for the one gentleman, we actually have an Apex webinar coming up uh, here in early December. And so if you want to learn a little bit more about um, uh, migration to Apex, uh, tune in for that. And then we're also, again, because of our um, partnership with Oracle and uh, um, our partner status, we're involved in a lot of Oracle events. These are some of the ones coming up and we'll actually – the Australian one just happened, so uh, that one's pretty much over. But you can see that uh, if you, depending on where you're located today, we have folks worldwide, you know, if you're near one of those locations, uh, come see us in person. We'd love to uh, uh, sit down with you face-to-face -face and hear what you're trying to do and what you're thinking about. And, uh, you know, more than happy to walk through those options with you and uh, see whether or not there's something we can do to help you secure your Oracle investments and, Oracle Forms applications moving forward. Well, that concludes uh, the webinar today. Thank you. Uh, when you exit out, you will get a feedback form. We please, please take a moment just to let us know uh, what what worked for you. Um, was it what you were expecting? Was there things that you didn't see that you wanted to see? Uh, or if you um, have something you'd like to see in an upcoming webinar uh, for a topic, uh, please let us know. We take we take those and use those to drive these uh, future monthly topics, if you will. Thanks again, and have a great day.